Petra Kuchi 274, Maximum Carnage and Mobile Fighter G Gundam Final Thoughts. So, uh, I didn't expect I would be reading Maximum Carnage this week. I ended up watching a Let's Play. It just showed up in my YouTube queue, and I thought, having watched the SNES game playthrough again, let me compare it to the book that I've read. But before that, um, I watched the final 10 episodes of Mobile Fighter G Gundam, and I gotta say, there was quite a shift in tone where it became serious, and it's like Devil Gundam's come back, and it's also the final of the Gundam fight tournament, and suddenly main characters start doing these things where it looks like they're being killed off. And then it turns out that Schwartz Bruder is kind of um, the person the main character's been looking for the whole time, as well as being his secondary mentor. And then he dies. He actually dies, unlike most of the characters in this show who it looks like they die, but they don't because this was written for 10-year-olds. And then Master Asia dies. And I will say I teared up because um, this was one of the irredeemably best parts of the show no longer being in the show. Master Asia is my kind of guy. Um, and he's one of those characters I've seen in, used in derivative works where um, he's the reason I decided to watch this anime in the first place. But the show continues for another five episodes with a surrogate uh, plot twist final last boss who was rubbish until he became awesome and then they killed him off um, par for the course. Um, but it was a, it, it was difficult watching the last five episodes because the quality of the show isn't particularly high. And it ultimately ends with Domon um, and his love interest confessing their love for each other and uh, using it to, for the ultimate love, love, final attack to beat the last boss at the end. Um, not sure if I could recommend it, but I'm definitely glad I came along for the ride. I wouldn't bother watching an anime this bad if it was someone hadn't dumped it all on YouTube. And speaking of dumping stuff on YouTube... I've just found some monstrously large collection of Hong Kong uh, Kung Fu movies. Um, and I'm just going to watch them. And I don't think any of them have Jackie Chan or Jet Li in them. Because <laughs> someone would probably copyright strike this shit. Um, I did manage to tear myself away from watching random stuff to actually do a little bit of art. Although a lot of what I did was kind of not in any relation to anything else. One of the things I'm constantly trying to do is just, just sitting down, keep my hand moving, do something. I just started doing some scribbles and it turned into a picture of Batman in some kind of place with a pipe or something. I don't know. The idea is, you know, he's injured and he's he's just trying to get a bit of breathing room from the chaos that is Gotham City for a moment. I didn't sit down with any intention to draw anything specifically, um... But I did then decide, having drawn one picture of Batman, well, what happens if I decide to draw a second picture of, this, of the same scenario, fully intending from the start to draw that scenario? What I found is when I, it came to doing the kind of second level of more complicated rendering, the complexity of the composition made me just tap out. Uh, also this week I decided let's do a Tuesday Bison that isn't all scribbles, so I'm very tentative when it comes to using the airbrush. I feel like... It's either going to become my mainstay or I'm just going to become like Mike Mignola and just go full high contrast blacks and nothing else. Um, I should have mirror flipped this image. It turned out pretty good for a guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. But even though his head's on a slant, I think it's kind of a little bit slanted the wrong way. Um, it is nice every once in a while to draw something a little bit less obviously rough. To remind myself that rendering while I'm not good at it, I can fake it to a point. So, Spider-Man Maximum Carnage is uh, a morality play involving Spider-Man from the early 90s that really suffers from being pre-digital colouring. Um, it's a cross-Spider-Man book multi-superhero event um, that starts with Harry Osborn... Peter Parker's best friend and the former Green Goblin being dead. They've just gone to the funeral. Mary Jane and Peter Parker are married in this continuity. And effectively, uh, Mary Jane is trying to convince Spider-Man to retire, if only for a couple of weeks, because things are going crazy. Um, Carnage escapes, goes on a serial killing spree. Uh, Peter Parker isn't sure if he should continue to be Spider-Man until he saves a couple of kids from being dropped off the roof by their mother who's gone insane due to one of the the villains 
driving everyone in New York a little bit nuts. Um, also, Venom is here to try and convince everyone to kill Carnage. Spider-Man does renege uh, and orders Firestar, who has the power to you know, use fire to burn Cat Carnage to death. Um, but he does renege at the last moment because this isn't the kind of things heroes do. This causes a rift between Venom and all the other heroes who've teamed up with Spider-Man. And then in the you know the final quarter, here comes Captain America um, to remind everyone how heroes are supposed to act. And really all Peter Parker needed was a nudge in the right direction to um, find you know, his inner super goodness. That also in this book of, of, you know, crossover characters happens to be a guy who looks an awful lot like Spawn but isn't Spawn. And this book might predate Spawn. I have nothing more to say than I noticed this guy has a cost cost a cursed costume and a big fucking collar. Um also right at the end of the book, it does kind of tease this idea that Carnage is a complete lunatic serial killer evil bastard because he was subjected to nothing but abuse for his entire life and maybe he is actually the biggest victim of all um but that's a story for another day um speaking of stories for another day i saw the new spider-man i only went to see it because uh it was an opportunity to reconnect with some old friends very good two and a half hours long held my interest for the entire time definitely a popcorn movie definitely worth seeing in a cinema because the special effects are really all you're here to see um a, a, a typical Marvel movie full of that kind of cute dialogue and relatable characters you expect, and also Bananas special effects. Really quite a, a different type of thing than what Maximum Carnage is, but that brings us to the end of Pecha Kucha 274 and the end of 2021. Things can only get better from here, right? Well, let's find out. See you next time.